what are we what is this game we're engaging in I think it's a game of trying to figure out whether people now are suffering due to historical injustices. Yeah. I, I repeat. Because where, if they are doing the suffering, then they do have the power to give Where the, do we start uh, with it? Where do we start with this and where do we finish? Yeah. Well, I don't my, know. My grandmother lost her brothers in the first war, and her, well, her father in the first war, and her brothers in the second war. They all just drowned at sea. Uh, I, she didn't spend the rest of her life looking for vengeance on this or indeed compensation for it yes. history was horrible for everybody yeah and we can't engage in this as i say in this mad accounting book mm. the i think the, the principle that goes behind the overcorrection would be something resembling retribution right mm -hmm. um, yeah i don't yeah, know sure. i don't know how much you buy into retributivism generally speaking no, um but to huge, me the, huge factor the interesting point about this is if we consider because you say like how far would it go? Like, how do we know when it's done? Well, yeah. retribution implies like for like, right? It implies kind of a, a of a um, eye for eye type approach, yeah. Yeah. meaning that it, it may be the case that these people, by by wanting some kind of retribution, they say the overcompensating is done when as much damage has been done to sure. you as has historically been done to us, which is yeah. obviously a disastrous approach. I think that's what we're going through from some people. But is there any legitimacy to the retributive approach of saying, well, listen, you've punched me in the face sure. and you could say, well, look, do we want to get, do we, do we want to fix this by becoming equal and no longer anybody punching each other in the mm -hmm. face or do I get to punch you back? Well, there's an added layer of complexity to this, isn't there? Which is, it's not even, if it were that claim, that would be one thing. But the claim is something like, historically, you punched somebody like me, so I can punch you now. I, I, it, I think it's more like, historically, you punched somebody, and as a result of that, I'm suffering. Well, whether or not you agree with that, that's that's more more accurately the claim, people, surely. Um, we've recently seen the interesting attempt by some people to do gay reparations, piggybacking on the back of reparations claims in America for black Americans. And this just goes to show the fact that this this stuff can just spill out everywhere mm -hmm. uh, because some people just want a bit of cash. And you know, that's that's what's going on with some people. But uh, no, I think that. I think the attempt to I think the attempt to claim suffering because a forebear suffered unbelievably unwise thing to open because I don't see how you close it. So I don't see how you close it from it. Let me give you a quick example. Of that. Sure. Again, I'm I'm interested in us trying to have reasonable attitudes towards ourselves as well as towards our past. Uh, but also the way that I, I feel like is perhaps the argument and people who who are putting it the way you're putting it are, are not mm -hmm. fully understanding the point, which is like, um, it's not that somebody in my ancestry suffered and because uh, they suffered at the hands of somebody else, mm -hmm. if you are a descendant of that somebody else, you deserve mm -hmm. uh, the retribution. It's like, well, not only have I suffered as a result of that historical injustice, but you've benefited from it. So it's not it's not by virtue of, of you being part of the ancestry that mm. caused the harm in the past. It's by virtue of you now benefiting from that, right? That's the argument I hear. How would you respond to that sure, version? But, but, well, there are so many things. One, one, <laughs> one problem in this whole thing, like, who's going to do the accounting on this? Mm. Like, seriously, who are the accountants of this? I mean, people are trying. Oh, yeah. The people who are trying are the people who also want to be the beneficiaries. Not not entirely coincidental, this. What if we agreed, for instance, that we should draw up a list of suffering people in history mm. and find a way to compensate people for it? Yeah. We might find, for instance, that at the top of the list of races that have suffered are the Jews. Do we do some massive house-to-house -house money taking right. and give it to the Jews? <coughs> I mean, where on earth would this end? You yeah. know, my my well, presumably my... it would end after that if we managed to actually account for everything. Because of course, like, how about another, how about another? I mean, if you wanted, if, here's one that would would easily follow that. Yeah, my forebears did more to fight and for this country and its liberties than your forebears. <laughs> Therefore, I deserve more of the liberty. Wow. Okay, people could do that. They could. They, they could easily do that. But they next. wouldn't because that would be silly, right? But well, it, it's all silly at some point <laughs> yeah. because we're looking at we're looking at history as some kind of 
bank that mm. we that where deposits have been put that are being kept from us. Yeah. And that at some point in our lifetimes we can pull the lever ka ching. And the interest rates are pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> and I I as I say, if you start this game. Yeah. What's so the end? I just think a, a reasonable attitude towards history, among other things, would help us to have a more reasonable attitude towards the present. But the whole thing is being interpreted in this extraordinary zero-sum, highly retributive way. And one other thing, if I may, just to add to that is, yeah. I'm obsessed by this issue. I, I wrote about it quite a lot in The Strange Death of Europe. But I'm obsessed by this issue of forgiveness. As you know, I write a chapter about it in The Mans of Crowds. But why we spend no time thinking about the mechanisms of forgiveness, which as you know, I quote, quote Hannah Arendt on in this book, which is just something fascinating to me. We, we are living in societies where um, guilt and um, blame, including historical guilt and historical blame, are made to be overwhelming for certain groups of people. But we have no thought about what the mechanisms of forgiveness would be. But here's the other problem from that is that we don't even think in a serious way about who actually can forgive and who can be forgiven. Mm -hmm. But as for where the bad ideas themselves come from, I mean, as you know, in the chapter on this, I, I tried to trace a very short history of it. But the, the, these were these are the products of um, liberal arts universities in America, and uh, um, and maybe this is a rather snotty thing to say, but. Um, since we're in Oxford, maybe I, I can get away with it in this room. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there is there is a Ponzi scheme going on in the American university system, as in this university system in the UK to some degree. And this is a very good, and the whole intersectional thing is a very good way to try to cover that over in its last years. Disciplines that aren't disciplines, that prepare people for no no career the the products of the social sciences in the american system of if you are in six figure debt or your parents are in six figure debt because you did a social science degree that claimed to have nixed certain issues of the gender issue you're never making that back you're never making that back are you likely to, in that situation, recognize that you've been diddled or dig down further in some way? Right. Sadly, the studies tend to show that people dig down. That's interesting. It's like even if you become convinced after that time that actually maybe this was a waste of time, you won't allow yourself to accept it. No way they will. Hmm. No way. It'll always be somebody else's fault.